Welcome to Two Women in Crypto, a weekly podcast birthed on a whim by two women who are excited about the cryptocurrency landscape and have a shared passion about empowering others to step into the digital, tokenized world of the future. We offer tips, tricks, and our own individual insights as to how to begin to navigate this shift. We are not financial advisors nor experts. We are just here to encourage you to look at the possibilities. So welcome to the future. You're right on time. Good morning, Allie. Good morning, Andrea. How are you? you? I'm good. I'm good. You know what? I was talking to Kelly this morning and I was like, you know what? I was singing in the shower. I got some news. I was listening to the morning news and I'm showering and I'm like, it's beginning to look a lot like a recession. Everywhere you turn. (laughs) Oh my gosh. I love it. That could be a really good song. Yeah, I mean, as as you all know, those that have been leaning in with us for a while, we have a plethora of parody out there and we're creating more and more to be launched. But yeah, that's a good one. We're going to start writing the holiday album now. Yeah, yeah. I think we have about 11 videos in queue. So everybody stay tuned. They're all really good in their own way. Super educational and so yeah. much fun. Like, what a joy to work on this project with you, Kelly. It's been a blast. (laughs) It has been a blast. (laughs) And your creativity, I swear to goodness, Saturday Night Live, if you're listening, she's a great (laughs) parodic writer. I mean, just give her some songs and she'll write you something. I I promise you. So. (laughs) All right. So, yeah, welcome back, everybody. We're going to we're going to kind of dive. It's been like a crazy week. And like, like I said, like this morning I was checking the news. Kelly, I don't know if you saw Tesla is doing layoffs, 10% of their workforce globally, Coinbase, Gemini, Bitso. So as, as the Federal Reserve raises interest rates, companies lay people off. It's part of the cycle that we're in. Yep. So, you know. Everybody's tightening their belt. I mean, it's, it is it. And what I also found interesting is Tesla or Elon specifically making that statement that he wants everybody back in the office. Did yeah. you see that? I did see that. Yeah. I did see that. So, yeah, it's a good excuse to be like, if you're not in the office. Yep. Got to go. Got to go. Got to go. Speaking of got to go. <laughs> <laughs> I had a, I had a go, go, bye, bye from Celsius. We're going to, we're going to talk about it. And like, for those of you who have been following us, like I've been a big fan of Celsius. I've held my coins with them for Oof, well over a year. And, um, you know, Kelly informed me of some rumors that were flying around. So, of course, you know, I did I did a deep dive and, and, you know, my personal choice. Right. Like Kelly and I are not financial advisors. We're just two women talking about crypto, bringing education to everybody to encourage people to do your own research and you know make your own decisions and and we're here to help bring some of this education to you hopefully in a funny way because recessions aren't funny but when you sing in song at least you can laugh for a moment of time <laughs> you have to have some lightheartedness here and there yeah totally totally so you know <clears throat> like after kelly had told me about some of the rumors going on with celsius you know i had to be like what's the risk reward here, right? Because every single platform, when you put your money, there is a risk. Some some of these platforms are higher risk and you get a much higher reward. And, you know, a year ago I found, like I trust Alex Mahensky. I've listened to his AMA, Ask Alex Anything every Friday at one o'clock Eastern time on YouTube. He's I, I always listen to him, but like, we don't know who these people are <clears throat> at the end of the day. And when 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 things start piling up, you really have to take a look at it, right? So I pulled up, I remember, I think it was what, Kelly, back in November, the CFO was arrested. And again, you you know, you look at things and you're like, you know, if I hired somebody or we hired someone to work at two women in crypto and we didn't know them right? Like you, you can excuse our behavior, but when it becomes like 
one employee than another employee and what were you know what what were some of the things that the CFO was arrested for very concerning right, right. sexual assault money laundering and then I found out that Celsius hired a lead a young woman right no big deal I'm sure she's super smart I can't remember her name but when you looked her up on LinkedIn she doesn't really have any experience to be leading institutional investing Okay, this is like a multi-billion dollar company. You can't have a 20-something year old running like as a lead, you know, for institutional investing. My my opinion, right? I'm sure she's a great person. But again, Celsius was part of the Badger Dow hack, which was a huge hack. Celsius wasn't transparent about how much money they lost. It's speculation that they lost about $51 million. Now... They also went, they got the SEC went after Celsius to regulate them. And you see compounding problems on top of what Celsius is going to have to do. Right. Like, and and they're transparent about the inflows and outflows of the money flowing in and out of Celsius week over week. They're down. Their token is down about 90% year over year, which Honestly, with the down market, I wouldn't even be that concerned about it, but throw all this information on top of it. And it's very, very concerning, right? Because the regulators, a couple shady characters working there, the outflows are high. All the Luna token people just got burned, right? So it's, right. it's again, dot com, like I, I, I think of it, dot com bus. What happened during dot com bus? good companies went away. Right. Not everybody's going to survive this. I mean, whether or not, like you said, it's good or bad, or there are individuals in, in the back end that are good or have had kind of nefarious pasts. So there will be a thinning out of the troops, if you will. And, you know, Celsius, I mean, speculation, we still don't know, right, but right. it's, it's good to err on the side of caution, especially when you potentially could have been holding or still are holding a good amount of your life savings or what have you. So again, not financial advice, but it's good to lean into the news and we don't always know where to look for the news. Totally, totally. And and again, like one of my biggest concerns, and I know you and I touch base on this during the week, is like, you know, Celsius, it's a savings and loan platform. So it's similar to a bank. If people get nervous, what do they do? They pull their coins out of the bank. So people are pulling their coins out of Celsius. And, and I and I know, like, we touched base on this, too. So everybody check out the price of Voyager. Voyager right. went up 46% this week because people like me transferred all their coins off of Celsius onto Voyager. And I and I actually put more on SafePal because I'm, I'm nervous, but I I want Voyager to be my bank. Like, that's my intention long term. I'm, I'm still on the waiting list to get the debit card. Regulation is coming. You know, there's more and more bills being introduced. Um, but so I'm hoping that, you know, Celsius will will make the transition. I mean, Voyager will make Voyager, the transition. Yeah. And I kept my I kept my Celsius account open. So if things work themselves out, you know, but for now, yeah. it's just it the 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 risk is way too much high. It's way too high for the amount of reward that we get, right? Oh, absolutely. There are a lot of things out there that are risky right now. So yeah, yeah, it's good to have yeah. options. Yep. Yeah. So so that's kind of like my beef with Celsius. Do you have anything else you want to say about that? We'll just move on. No, I just I just am grateful that we have some community that has their fingers in the back end that can give some heads up on some of these other things. Cause I wouldn't it was not watching Celsius at all, was not on my radar. I wasn't even looking at the coin price or anything. So grateful, a nod to those that are listening in that shared some information. So appreciate it. Yeah, no, that's great information. And if anybody sees anything concerning, like, please, like, email us, like, two women in crypto at protonmail.com. You know, just send us articles, post things on our website or we're anywhere. I think we're everywhere, right? We're on Twitter. Yep. And, and we'll do a deep everywhere. dive. As you can tell, Andrea is great at really peeling back the layers and finding out some of the specifics. So we would love to know more. So, yeah, absolutely. Definitely, definitely. And, um, so, you know, there was there was a big like lobbying meetup, I guess, over at Congress and the government at the White House this past week. And Charles Hodgkinson put a suit on and went over there and 
he, you know, he was like, let me tell you some stuff I discovered. So the Bitcoin community, not everyone, but like people in the community are trying to lobby to basically ban all cryptocurrency except for Bitcoin. So we're talking all proof of stake, um, all crypto except for BTC. And it's just that's not what crypto is about. And that's not what's going to happen either. Because at the end of the day, right, Kelly, and I think about this all the time, and I would tell people this from the beginning when they were telling me cryptocurrency is speculative, it's high risk, and and it is, but again, companies are spending billions and billions of dollars building these systems to connect with the old legacy financial system. They're not all going to go out of business. Bitcoin will not be the only one. Right. So I think that going and lobbying against other crypto like we need to be u- unifying together i completely Not agree vision exactly yeah. yeah yeah i mean we're we've, we've been we, there's been a long road paved so far and there's still a lot of you know work to do but to see this the you know setting their feet solid against each other is not a good energy at all so we gotta get on the same train yeah <laughs> it's it's just it's so super important um you know, like I said, we need unity, right? Because that's what's going to help us get through this at the end of the day. We all need to come together. Um, you know, and with that said, I know I sent you that article. I, I think you have like Michael Barr, if you want to pull yep, up the profile. I so I just kind of want to touch base on a couple more news items um, before we move on. So President Biden nominated Michael Barr as the Federal Reserve Vice Chair, right? So the Federal Reserve Bank has a as a governing board, which we're actually going to cover in our next class. Kelly and I are going to meet up and we'll, we'll have like a determined date so we can move forward with our next class and kind of give an overview of the, the current legacy system and probably like some things that are going to change for the future. So this way we know what to look for and, and let's just get educated. We were never taught any of this stuff in school. So I'm really looking forward to that class because like you said, there wasn't those teachings outside of just maybe learning how to reconcile a checking account and who even uses a checkbook anymore. So yeah, it'll right. be a really good class. Yeah, it's, it's going to be really good, um, super educational. So I've been working on putting together like a pretty long document. So I'll be, I'm going to keep adding on it and then we'll launch the class soon. So, but the thing is, it's like, you know, if I go up to like the average person, right, Kelly? And I'm like, who's Michael Barr? No one knows. Oh, no, right? for sure. So <clears throat> Michael Barr used to be the assistant um, to the treasurer, okay, for the United States government. He was he he was in the Obama administration. He was he does he helped design the Dodd Frank Act. Just to let uh, everybody know, we have a question about that too, which we'll get to. Okay, um, but, cool. Yeah. yeah, let me. I'll finish my 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 <clears throat> yeah. train of thought here. So he helped design the Dodd Frank Act. He joined Ripple Labs back in 2015. I believe back in March of 2022, he joined the board of directors of Ripple. And he's also he's also on the board of another company um, called Lending Club. So a while ago, Biden appointed him to take over the controller of the currency. So, you know, just like Brian Brooks, that was the position that Brian Brooks had. He didn't get not he didn't get appointed because they felt it was. um you know, a conflict of interest, right? right? Because XRP, like Ripple Labs created XRP. So Michael Barr has been a part of XRP since 2015. Do you think there's a conflict of interest? <laughs> like, I mean, we're all XRP holders, like I'm an XRP holder. So again, they're like, no, no, no. So what does Biden do months later? Well, let's just put them on like the board of governors for the Federal Reserve Bank to be a part of uh, the regulatory body for big banks. <laughs> it's so interesting. You can't make this stuff up. No, I know. <laughs> the stage, it's a Shakespearean play for all. I mean, it's really interesting. It really, it's so interesting to, to watch this happen. You know, so again, it doesn't mean he's going to get in, but we should be watching this, right? Um, 
because this is a really big, powerful position. And, you know, and we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Um, all right. Hit me with the question. What was the question we had? So Kim asks, and first of all, hello, Kim. Hi, Kim. She says, hello, incredible humans. Right back at you. May I ask if the Dodd-Frank Act applies to savings and loans institutions or credit unions? It's a good question. That's a great question. And here, here's the best answer. You have to contact them because they're all different. Um, I've heard, I've heard economists say credit unions are safer. And I've also heard economists say that banks are safer. No one really knows for sure. You know, and I, and I, and, and like for me, like when I look at all of this information, right. And I look at our lives over the past couple of years, the government told us to stay home, to watch Netflix for two weeks and don't worry about it. Okay. So, and, and the other thing that really concerns me again is like when I hear the media and people who are part of the government, they're blaming all the inflation on supply chain issues and the war between Russia and Ukraine. They're not talking about the trillions of trillions of dollars that we printed when the government told us to stay home, right? They stopped society and now we restarted society, I guess, in a way, not really well, but like the bottom line is things are going to be messed up y'all, right? Because we, we would never live through anything like this. And that's why Kelly and I always talk about like, yeah, talk to your, talk to your credit unions, talk to your savings alone. I felt safe having my money on Celsius, right? Because it wasn't directly connected to your bank account. So I figured if Celsius isn't directly connected to my bank account, then the banks can't really bail in my account at Celsius. But Celsius has all these other issues. So I moved it to a different centralized exchange. And worst case scenario, I convert all my US, USD to USDC and I put it on a hardware wallet like SafePal. It's really easy. It was so easy to send my money off to SafePal and, and we'll take it from there. Yeah, super so, simple. The, the, you know, the other thing I just would like to um, add in regards to banks is when you choose to go into your credit union or your local bank or your, your major, major bank, such as Wells Fargo or Bank of America, is really lean into who you're speaking to because not everybody knows the questions, the answers to the questions. Your tellers aren't going to necessarily know the answers to these questions. And because the world is changing in such a profound way on so many fronts, there are inner workings behind the back end that you can challenge your banking institutions on for truths. For instance, setting up different types of banking accounts and things of that nature. Um, so just be willing to go in strong with your questions and not just be told an answer and walk right out the door. We have to, we have to be willing to ask the hard questions. Yeah. And it's really important to diversify, right? Because no one for like no one for no one can give us like this is going to happen because we don't know what's really going to happen. Right. So we diversify. Maybe have some money in a big bank. Maybe have some money in a credit union. Gold and silver, physical gold and silver in the house, cash in the house. We always talk about that Glint card, right? Because again, we don't know what's going to happen to the dollar. The dollar might become king and get really strong, right? Or we could go into like a really high inflationary period. We don't know what's going to happen. So if we go into a high inflationary period, then we have our glint card that holds grams of gold. And then we go to the store, we go to the grocery store and we can pay for things. So, you know, if that, if, if that happens, our glint card goes up in value because it's gold, it's grams yep. of gold. So we, we just kind of want to diversify, you know, and do the best you can, right? To, you know, with people with means, they have, you know, the, you, there's more diversification and, you know, people who don't have maybe like a lot of like mo monetary wealth, talk to your community, grow food. Like now's the time to do it. Why not? You know, it's fun. It's community building. Like we're having a blast here in Flagler beach. Everyone's freaking planted potatoes. It's the best, <laughs> you know? 
Yeah. And now, it's, yeah, and now we're get we're you know we're gathered together. We're putting together a plan to have like community chickens and like. So it's really really important because like money is important, makes the world go round, but community is really really important. And I heard like Robert Kiyosaki mention, he's just like, you know, you can't eat a dollar, you can't eat Bitcoin, but you can eat tuna fish. So these yep. are just all things we want to, yeah, we want to keep this in mind. And hopefully we won't have food shortages, even though President Biden said we would. President Biden also said we're moving to a new world order. So he said these things from his mouth. I'm so, sorry. I know. He also said he was running for senator. So we don't know, right? So, <laughs> I'm sorry. We're not sure for. No one's sure. So we just diversify everything that we possibly can. Shake it off. Shake it off. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. So he did say it was really interesting. Cause like, so we have, we have midterm elections are coming up right in 2022, November. So Biden does this little press conference yesterday or the day before with Jay Powell. Jay Powell is the chairman of the Federal Reserve Bank. He reads from a paper about how he trusts the Federal Reserve Bank and that he appointed him to, and he, he trusts him. At the same time, they're wrong about inflation. Janet Yellen came out and publicly said, I was wrong. She was wrong, yeah. So these are the people that are in charge of the world reserve currency. <laughs> okay. So they're uh -huh. wrong. So let's just keep trusting them and let's see how this plays out. But Biden reads a paper, reads the things, talks about how much he trusts him because he wants to distance himself just in case something bad happens. Right. Then Jay Powell can take the fall. And not Biden, right? So Biden went and he kind of like dissolved some, I guess there were some shady student loans through like Corinthian colleges. So he, you know, and so there's a lot going on because the midterm elections, he's got, he's got, he's trying to win votes here. These people right. want to be reelected. So, no, exactly. yeah. So, but it was really interesting, Kelly. And I'm super, I'm like, I feel like I'm really revved up today. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should sing a song real quick. It's beginning to look like a recession. Thank you for that. Go ahead. It really is. It really is. So, you know, and we've lived through this before, yes. you know, we, the economy goes in cycles. Um, but anyway, so at the end of the press conference, everyone jumped up and was like, no questions, no questions. <laughs> They wouldn't let anyone, it was really weird if you watched it to the end. So it's like, I don't think Biden's feeling that good. You know, uh, we'll we're going to have to pull that up. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I can't, I'm not a politician. Thank God. Um, not my jam. The news that you, you know, dive into, I'm so grateful for, but I can't imagine there's a lot of pressure out there on all fronts. And it's so complicated, you know, and I, you know, and I think, you know, all these people can't be bad. I'm sure there's good people. Not making excuses. I just can't imagine, yeah. you know, it's, there's a yeah. lot of focus on all fronts. Right. And it's like, it's really hard to change the way that the world works, which is what we're doing. You know, we're right. changing everything, our financial system, the way we trade, the, our global supply chain is going to change everything, like everything is going to connect to the internet of value. So that's a big change and it's going to take a couple of years. Yeah. So about that data. yeah. But with that said, I actually want to share some good news about Caroline Pham. Do you have that? On? I do. Awesome. Let's pull her up because she's super impressive lady. <clears throat> I can't find my notes. I think I took 12 pages of notes. So, <laughs> you sent me a snapshot. There was a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So Caroline Pham, she's the commissioner for the CFTC. So the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And there's some solid legislation coming out. There's one bill um, about agricultural and digital assets. Um, so there's a piece in there. Really good bill. Uh, Senator Loomis wrote a bill. So there's good bills going into, if you go to congress.gov and what Caroline Pham, the way she spoke, 
and what she articulated is awesome. So we, we can follow her super smart, sharp lady, definitely on our side. Awesome. We need regulation without stifling innovation. Because if we stifle and over-regulate all this innovation, all the innovation is going to go across seas. We're not stopping this, right? Whether we want the internet of things or the internet of value, it doesn't really matter, right? Because it's, it's, the bottom line is it's happening. Oh, so, absolutely. Right. So we want to make sure that it's available for all. And maybe, you know, maybe we can democratize some of these things, right? Because... When I look at Link2, we, we touched on that last week. Link2, you know, it's like you could you could join Link2 if you're an accredited investor. You can invest in companies like Ripple, Uphold, really good companies pre-IPO. Okay. So when I heard Rosie Rios speak, right? So Rosie Rios, everybody can go to YouTube and say Rosie Rios speaks at Dubai conference. She she's a sharp, sharp lady. She's right? very sharp. I would love to know her history. We were talking about her last week. I'd love to know her backstory. But anyway, I'll, I'll do I'll do a deep dive on her. But, you know, wow. very articulate, very educated, you know, lady. She was the 43rd treasurer of the United States government. She was part of the 2008 financial crisis. She signed the last hundred dollar note. And she said at the end of that, she's like, my next job is to go and work on the future of currency, right? So she said that back in 2014, 2022, she speaks at a Dubai conference. And again, what she say? Blockchain and cryptocurrency. The train has left the station. We are not going back. This right. is the future of currency, right? So this is it. So she's been working on a really interesting project. And Kelly was like, it's really well, but from the esoterical side, I mean, from the esoteric side, I'm like, what is this all about? Because it ties into things that I've been leaning into on that front. So yeah, go ahead. It's a, it's an interesting project. Yeah. So everybody, if you get a chance today or right now, go to, go to unicoin.com. So basically, Unicoin is going to be a new cryptocurrency that will be out on regular exchanges sometime in 2023. So this is an up and coming project. It hasn't even been released yet. And what this is going to do is the Unicoin is going to be the world's first equity backed dividend paying cryptocurrency. Okay. And it's going to be part of um, almost like a fund for emerging uh, equity companies, right? So again, this is going to be something that's huge, right? So I know for people that invest you know, money in the stock market, you're looking for stocks that pay out dividends, right? So it, right? Which is really good because it's another form of like passive income. Now, what Rosie Rios, she was, she's backing this project. She's also on the board of directors. We want to follow the money. I always say, like, if you want to know what's going on in the world, turn the TV off and follow the money. Because, I agree. yeah, and as much as we want to be loving, light, we're full of love, like, that's who we are. But at the end of the day, the world that we currently live in runs on money. And I know a lot of spiritual people will disagree with me and things like that, but money gives you access to things. It so, does. Yeah. yeah. So when I hear Rosie Rio speaking about Unicoin and how it's the it's the world's first regulated cryptocurrency security by the SEC. You don't hear, are we seeing this on mainstream news? Is this blowing up? Right. No, not at all. Not at all. I was not aware of it, like I said. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So, but again, it's kind of like we want to take, we want to, we want to look at this, right? Because if you go to unicoin.com, if you are an accredited investor, you need to make two hundred thousand dollars a year or have a million dollars in assets, not including your house. Okay, then you can go through the process, become an accredited investor, and buy unicoin at ten cents. Ten cents. I know 10 cents. It's like, oh, wow. Wow. And it's an interesting group. And I'll include this link as well. Um, 
who is involved in the unicorn hunters. I'm just going to, you know, Rosie Rios obviously is already involved, but there's a list of, you know, big names behind it. So you can look at unicornhunters.com for some back end information as well. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. It, I mean, it looks like a really, really promising project for the future. And again, like, you know, we can, we can watch, we'll, we'll be, we'll definitely be watching this yeah, and we'll be absolutely. reporting back. So yeah, that's definitely, um, it's definitely an up and coming, exciting project for sure. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to doing a deep dive and sharing it because I, like I said, I, there's a few people I'd love to reach out about it. Cause I don't think a lot of people are aware, like you said, it's not in the mainstream news. That's right. That's right. And this should be blowing up for people. And like, I know a lot of us like aren't accredited investors and like, that's why we want to follow companies like link Two because they want to democratize the accreditation process. Right. So someone like me or Kelly, we should be able to take like a basic financial test and become accredited without going right. through all these regulatory hoops. And this, the way the current system in the United States is designed, the wealthy get wealthier and people like us are like chomping at the bits, but we can't invest because we're not accredited investors. Yeah, we had a, I had, it was like another, another one of those projects, but at the end of the day, regardless, and I'm not saying that it's justifiable, but there are so many projects that we can get involved in. So don't yeah. lose hope. There's many ways that we can dollar cost average into a number of projects or coins specifically that will set us up on the three to five year plan for success. So don't lose hope. Anybody who's out there that's leaning in, thinking about it, I can't, we can't preach that enough. Stay on the train, keep your head down, do what you need to do. That's it. That's it. Dollar cost know, average in. Perfect. Yep. That's what we're going to do. We're going to dollar cost average in. And with that said, I still think the market's going to go down, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So June 10th, everybody put it on their calendar. Uh, Jerome Powell will come out and he'll be releasing the inflation numbers for May because we're always like a month behind. So we'll be getting those numbers. And so we definitely, you know, what the Fed says, what Jerome Powell says, the market moves. Right. So and that's just I've been watching it now and it's always the same thing. You know, if inflation numbers are low, crypto goes up, the stock market goes up. If inflation numbers are high, you know he's going to keep raising interest rates and then the market's going to go down. So this is kind of the cycle that we're in. So we're just, we'll be watching it. And the day that Jerome Powell says, things are looking really good because aren't things looking really good, Kelly? Oh, they are amazing. <laughs> they're amazing. looking so good that we'll slow <laughs> We'll slow down raising interest rates. And once they slow down raising interest rates, boom, the crypto market and the stock market will, will do a nice pop. Yeah. So, you know, we definitely and, and I and I think it's going to happen, you know, because when, when they raise the interest rates as much as they do, we're going to you know, that's when we see major layoffs. Right. Um, and we'll see prices of housing go down. We'll see prices of goods going down. So, you know. And at the same time, we'll still see inflation with electricity, with gas and with our food. So it's it's not the best situation, but, you know, we're all in this together. We're riding it out. Yeah, absolutely. And you'll see the market trading. We had a nice little pop back. I think Bitcoin got back up to 31 or so. But, you know, it's still in a trading range. It's still bouncing. And I think, like you said, until next week, the 7th through the 10th, especially the 10th, there's going to be it'll be interesting to see what happens. Nobody has a crystal ball. No one, has, right. And that's exactly it. No one has a crystal ball. And like, like Kelly said, so Bitcoin's trading like what, just over 30,000 now? It was, I haven't looked at the charts much this morning, yeah. but it's still in that range. Yeah. So if we think about Bitcoin, it's all time high was 69,000 getting in at 30,000, even if it goes down to 20,000, no big deal. Right. Cause we're dollar cost averaging in. Right. So, I mean, that's just the way, like, I always look at these things and I, everything is on sale and there might even be like a, a much bigger sale. Um, but, you know, with that said, it's always a good time, like during like market volatility or if things start looking really bearish, which means the market's just going to be down or trading sideways for a while. We, we take some time out 
and we research new projects, right? And, and our current ones. But I know somebody in our group had asked us to do a deep dive on Cosmos. Mm-hmm. So, you know, let's talk about Cosmos for a little while. Okay. So <clears throat> really fun projects. I wrote this down for you. I want to, cause I, I know this is totally up your alley. So let me go through my 3000 pages of notes. Perfect. So do you know what Cosmos was named after? I don't. I haven't done the deep dive on it. No. Right. I had no idea. I knew, I kind of thought it was something to do with the universe because it's Cosmos, but it's super fun. So when they were th- then when the team was thinking about like our galaxy and how various elements exist individually, but are bound and interact together by a universal force, gravity, they came up with the name. She's dancing. I love it. Oh, they yeah. That's right. My jam. Yeah, so they came up with the name Cosmos, so which is really, really cool. So now when we think of Cosmos, right, and what makes Cosmos like really special is that it allows independent blockchain. So if you take Bitcoin or Ethereum, it allows these other platforms to connect with Cosmos and still remain independent, still have their own uh, governance but they're all connecting, which is really, really cool, right? So again, we're looking at scalability, we're looking at interoperability, and it's something that Kelly and I always talk about. Um, All of these systems are going to connect, and the thing that Cosmos does is that it allows like the internet of blockchains to actually come, come together, right? So they're connecting all these different blockchains so if I'm on Cardano and I want to swap my ADA for Bitcoin, Cosmos is going to allow me to do that without even having to go on a swapping uh, exchange. Platform. Yeah, yeah, which, which is really, really cool. Um, so again, you know, with that said, I think I think like so if you look at Cosmos and you look at AVAX, Tezos, Near Protocol, Polkadot. Cardano, Ethereum, go on and on and on. These are all smart contract platforms. And I believe that they're all going to connect with each other, the ones that make it. Because Solana shut down again this week, right? Yep. I saw that they've had a lot of struggles. Not to say that anybody needs to go out there and be fearful of Solana, but there are, I mean, they've definitely struggled over the last six, nine months. There's been a lot. Right. So you take a system like Solana and, and one of the great things about Solana is the amount of transactions that Solana can do. Now, the system, because we're still in the AOL, you know, mm-hmm. moment of time here, right? So we're going to see systems have problems. Ethereum has a lot of problems. We saw Luna, you know, and now Solana is going through like similar issues. Um, so Cosmos also provides a lot of transactions per second. So if you look at Ethereum, Ethereum provides, I think, 15 transactions per second, which is why one of the reasons why the fees are super high. Cosmos has, I think, 10,000 transactions per second. It might even be more than that. Um, But it's a lot of transactions per second. So again, I think they have about 150 validators. So that's like 150 no. You look at Polkadot, I think Polkadot has 300, so more more decentralized, but not like Bitcoin. Bitcoin has 13,000 nodes, more than that. Highly decentralized. It's really hard to bring down that system. Not as hard to bring down Solana. So these are just things that we want to, you know, every coin has different use cases. And I think they're, they're all going to be used, but again... Um, we want to definitely keep that in mind. And, and when, P, when we hear a lot of that fear, uncertainty, and doubt about Bitcoin, no Bitcoin strengths, right? It was the first peer-to-peer, decentralized, highly scalable, highly secured, right? We really want to look at Bitcoin as like if, if other chains fail, Bitcoin is our lifeboat. And I just want to drive that home, you know, talking about some of these other platforms. 
Yeah, that's a really good point. And, you know, the, the other thing that we talk about is leaning into other projects. And I think that we've talked to you and I separately about it. And I know that there are some people that are leaning in and listening that are may already be familiar or in this project, but there is what is considered to be the fastest blockchain. That's how they're marketing themselves. And it's Tectum IO. It's T-E-C-T-U-M dot I-O. Check it out. It hasn't gone live yet. Um, it's still out there on the pre-launch options. So I would encourage anybody to check that out. I have not done the deep dive into it, but it is based on soft notes, printing soft notes. So All right. All right. we'll put that on a list to, to dive into, but I'm going to go ahead and share the link and we'll include that also in the link for the podcast notes for anybody listening in. Okay, cool. Yeah. Cause I was thinking too, cause I know H bar is super fast and I think that that's a newer project as well. Trade. I think it's like trading at like a couple of pennies now. And that's the other thing too. It's like, you know, we look at some of these projects um, and it's really good to look at what was their all time high and where are they today? And do I believe in this project? Who's the team behind it? I mean, some of these projects have solid teams. So again, we just kind of want to diversify. Like for me, I want to hold my Bitcoin. I've stated the reasons why I want to hold my Ethereum because they were the first. Even though I think that they have a lot of problems, they're still backed by consensus, which has ties with JP Morgan. They were the first smart contract to be adopted. So I do believe they're going to be around a while. But I also believe in Cosmos and Polkadot, Card, and you know, some of these other blockchains. And we're going to keep an eye to see how they're all going to come together and connect. Um, and with that said, so like, Sorry, did you want to say something? I just wanted to confirm because I know that Mary, um, I've been in Tectum a bit. Mary's in it as well, who's listening in. Um, she just cool. said that um, she got hers at $1, which I think is where I went in as well. Currently, it's at 2 and it's supposed to launch at 7 But lean into the projects. Take a peek. You know, yeah. if you purchase this particular project with Bitcoin as an FYI. So. Okay, cool. Yeah, and I know that Tezos, if people want to add that to their list as well, because I do believe Tezos will be big when we start to tokenize real estate. And, you know, we'll we'll add that as well to do like a deeper dive on it. Because I, I believe Tezos went all the way down to trading just over a buck. So, you know, that's another one that we want to keep an eye on. And something that I'm going to do a deeper dive on. Um, so I was looking into cosmos ecosystem and like finance smart chain is like the biggest project that's on cosmos uh to date so they have a really strong backing from from binance which is huge right mm -hmm. um and one of one of the projects that they built was a decentralized exchange called osmosis okay so i did a deeper dive in osmosis you know, and during times when the market's kind of going sideways, if we have some cash on the side and we're open to doing a little bit higher risk, Osmosis will give you almost 50% APR on Osmo tokens, right? Oh, so it's a, de it's a decentralized exchange that you can, you can do, um, you can download the Kepler wallet extension on your desktop and you can either um, stake your osmosis <clears throat> through the Kepler wallet or you can do it through your trust wallet, which is a little bit easier. And they're also on Exodus. I'm sure they're on others, but those are the ones I'll mention. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Yep. Yep. So just like, so I think it's a really cool project to do it, you know, to kind of, to kind of lean into as well. Um, and, and then, you know, doing the deeper dive, I came across another project that's being built on Cosmos called the Secret Network. And this, oh. this is good. So this is good news, right? So last week we touched base about the World Economic Forum and the dystopian possibility. Now today let's talk about the privacy possibility, right? Because all of these systems are being built at the same time. So the secret network is the first blockchain with data privacy by default. Awesome, right? So if we're building applications 
or we're holding tokens. Um, this, the secret network keeps all your data 100% private on the Cosmos blockchain. Very, very good. Okay, so very it's cool. all permissionless and it's all privacy preserving. So it's not a privacy token, but it's a place to store your data privately. And th these are the things we want to know about because it's really important knowing how Facebook, Google, Amazon, we see what these folks are doing to our data. We want our data to be as private as possible. So then for me, for clarification, does that mean, so like right now, if I look at a project, I can actually see where or what wallets are holding what, right? I can see their, so in yeah. this case, you would be holding things and until you brought it live onto the network, there would be no traceability. Is that no, tra no traceability and say yeah. you're working on a project with like a couple of people in your network, you can allow just those people to view what you're doing, but no one else. Yeah. You control your data. And that and again, like this is best case scenario for us folks, right? Because like we're 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 in the data revolution. They're walking us through the great reset. They're not stopping. Right. We don't know what the end result is, but this is such good news that we can be able to store our data, right? And we have the Brave browser. We have folks that are working on all these different amazing privacy focused applications. So we'll just keep bringing them to your attention when we come across, but kudos to Cosmos. You know, I think it's a great project. I don't personally hold it, but that's just because I hold Cardano, Ethereum, Polkadot, like there's so many. So I like to diversify my platforms with like infrastructures. And I think we were talking about this yesterday, right? Cause there's, there's metaverse projects. There's so many different projects. So if you're a gamer, you might want to look into gaming projects. If you're into art, you might want to look at, you know, digital art that you can hold as an NFT, like a Picasso or something through masterworks.io. Um, and like, if you're a gamer or you're into the metaverse or you're not like someone like me or you is not like I hold, right. engine, I hold engine token because it's the infrastructure. It's what the gaming and metaverses platforms are built on. And, and it's one of the largest ones. So, and that's kind of just part of how I'm um, diversifying. Right. Absolutely. Leaning into what feels right for you. It's an individual choice, right? Yeah, for There's sure. All kinds of projects out there. Yeah. And, and, and just like, so I just want to mention secret token is trading at a dollar 57. It's all time high was $9 and 91 cents. Okay, so the market is down substantially. So, you know, it, and again, I'm not saying jump into these projects, I'm not a financial advisor, but we might want to create like a watch list of our favorite projects and let's see how they do over the next couple of months. And it's such a good way to learn how the markets move and what news affects the stock market and cryptocurrency that pushes it down and lifts it back up. And for those that are uh, leaning in, like thinking, how can I create a watch list? You know, you may be taking notes over the last however many months listening to us and the news, et cetera. But if you go to CoinGecko, you can create a watch list on CoinGecko for you specifically. So you don't have to have like the TradingView platform or anything like that. But there's ways for you to be able to track it in real time in your own space that is very empowering because then you're going to be leaning into what is really happening and then you can make your educated decisions from there. And on that note, when you're doing your research, use CoinGecko as your starting place for a lot of these projects and not just a regular URL search because the, the, the individuals, the nefarious individuals out there that wanna lead you astray can easily mirror a website. Yeah. So you wanna to go to vetted locations to begin your initial searches and then you can kind of dive in from there so be careful because i've had some interesting emails recently as of late myself that always have me questioning when i get sent anything on the safety side just a side note here anything that looks a little too good to be true or questionable i always take a look at the link before i i click it and that's really easy to do you just do a right click and you can copy the link address paste it in your browser and see what it is before you execute 
the surge. So just on a safety note, I've had a few yeah. little. No, definitely. <laughs> and when in doubt, reach out. Like we're always here. You can shoot us an email anytime. You know, it's so, it's so important. It's, it's really important. Um, yeah. Yep. And then I know for me, like I use trading view and I love it. I have the app on my phone. I use it on my desktop. I, I, I think it's, it's a really good, and it's really good if you want to start looking at charts and things like that as well, just to kind of look at what they look like. Like we want to get used to seeing these things. Right. Um, oh, and I wrote down too. So for cosmos, the, um, the token is called Adam, which is really mm -hmm. fun. Right. Right. Yeah. And so Adam, I think, I think I did this yesterday, but Adam was trading at $9 and 82 cents yesterday. It's all time high was $44 and 80 cents. So, you know, again, we might special. right. And, and, and this is the thing, right? So like, we want to buy now we want to, or now, or, or even lower. So we want a dollar cost average. And like, maybe, you know, if Adam goes down to like $5, $4, we just want to keep dollar cost averaging. Cause we don't know it might yeah. go back up, but it might go back down. But we know that the all time high was $44 and 80 cents. And if we believe in the project and we believe it's going to make it, then we, you know, for a longer term hold, and or until the next bull market, like, what do you think the price is going to be? Right. Right. It's the same with polka dot, like polka dot, you know, is also trading, like everything is trading pretty low. So, you know, you can make a list of like your top five, 10 projects and just start tracking them. Like for me, it's fun, but you know, I know it's not fun for everyone else. <laughs> no, it's not fun. But once you get the, once you really kind of get into it, it's a kick in the pants. It's yeah. Kick in the pants yeah. to watch. Yeah, it's such it's and it's I I think it's good times. And I and I think like the next couple months we're going to be up and down. It's going to be super volatile. Um you know, we we're going to watch it, but we will be back in a bull market one day, whether it's the Bitcoin having or mass adoption. Like after that dot com bust, it took a little while, but the next phase is mass adoption, and that's exactly what's going to happen, okay? Like, I believe it. This is where I'm putting like my money. I'm doing these podcasts to reach out to people because I see the entire financial system changing. Every single person has to take responsibility and get educated, whether it's through us or other people. I don't care. Just get educated because, you know, when you can get into these projects at these low costs and, you know, like it's, it's life changing wealth. It's life changing wealth, right? And it's, it's, I'm excited. Yeah. And then it gives I'm you excited. options. Yeah. Give even us with, options. Yeah. Even with all the fear, uncertainty and doubt, it's like, I know what we hold and, and, and I believe it. And I could be wrong because I'm not a financial advisor and I don't give financial advice, but this is, this is where, you know, this is where I see the world going. Tokenization, digitization of the data revolution. Like it's on, they're putting 5g towers up in Flagler beach. They're going up all over the place. Yeah. Everyone's going to have smart TVs, driverless cars, smart refrigerators. Not everyone. I won't. But I can't stop what's happening. Right. No, you can't. I mean, they're laying new fiber optic cables everywhere. It's everywhere. You know, they're burrowing through people's backyards to make sure that they get all the infrastructure laid in. So yep, it's happening yep. everywhere. Yeah, because they really care about the speed of your internet. Yeah, that's where they get all the information. So it's all about them. It's all about them, not about I us. It. I love it. Well, that was fun. That was fun. Always. And until next week. So next week we'll be launching um, a, a date for the next class. So tune in for that. But until then, make sure to hodl on. Hodl on. Your hosts for Two Women in Crypto are Andrea Caldero and Kelly Lair. You'll find more information and details regarding the Two Women in Crypto membership, educational and informative class and event offerings, and more via their website, twowomenincrypto.com. Both Andrea and Kelly are available for speaking events and offer private consultations focused on helping individuals navigate the future. Until next time, pot along.